Hello, this is a tutorial for the girls coming to the Women's Issues Now robotics class at George School this Saturday. This is a sample of some of the items that you'll be making today. They're rather small, about two centimeters tall each one, and they have little holes in them into which you can put an LED. If you print these in translucent plastic, then the LED kind of becomes a bright light and makes it more visible. So I'm going to show you how to make these. I'm going to start first by getting rid of them and we will build them together today. Before you begin, make sure you're, you're in the right setup. So open SketchUp from your computer and then go to Window, Model Info and click on Units and make sure that you're in the decimal and millimeter format. The precision can be this one here 0.0, .0 millimeters. When you've done that, you can close the window. Then make sure we have the right toolbars by going to View, Toolbars, Large Tool Set. Make sure that is checked. And then press Close. This is my large toolbar set way up here at the top. Yours may be over here on the side, but all the buttons should be there. As you become more familiar with SketchUp, you'll use the shortcut keys here. I will try to grab the buttons, but sometimes out of habit I'll use a shortcut key from the keyboard to grab one of these buttons. So the spacebar will give you the arrow. The orbit tool is this one here. That's O. The hand or the pan tool is H on the keyboard. The push-pull tool, P on the keyboard. The move tool, M on the keyboard. These are used to, to navigate your space. To draw things, this is a rectangle, or R. A circle, C. The line tool is L. The arc is A. The erase button is E. And sometimes it's helpful to measure things with the tape measure, T. Now that you've gotten a quick tour of the tools, let's start off with the rectangle. Choose the rectangle tool. And move to where the origin is. And just draw a rectangle of arbitrary size. The dimensions of the rectangle are down here. And you can see it's rather large, 600 millimeters by 400 millimeters. So that's way too big for us to print. We want our rectangle to be 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. And we can do that simply by typing in 20 comma 20 and hitting the enter key. Our rectangle, which was large, has now become small, almost too small to see. But if you press this button right here, the zoom extents button, it will fill the screen with our rectangle. Now I'm going to grab the push-pull tool and I'm just going to click on my surface and hold down my mouse and drag it up some arbitrary distance. Okay. You can see here in the bottom left that the distance was 7.3 millimeters. Let's make it 20 again simply by typing 20 into the keyboard and pressing the enter key. With a wheeled mouse button, you can scroll in and out with the mouse button. If you don't have that, you can use the zoom button. Click on it, drag in and out to zoom, or again, the zoom extents will fill it. You can use the orbit button to orbit around. It's pretty intuitive. That's the bottom. Using the axes will help you orient yourself. The blue is always vertical. The green goes in and out. The red axis is left and right. So you'll use the orbit tool quite a bit. So this is one object that you can make, and this may be enough for you. I'm going to grab the hand tool. See, I did the shortcut. I'm going to grab the hand tool and pull it over here a bit, just to give me some more room to work. I'm going to make another rectangle here. Again, 20, 20. Again, I'm going to use the push-pull tool to lift it up. 
again, typing 20 will give me the exact height I want. And now I'm going to make a little pyramid here. I'm going to take the top surface and I'm going to, to shrink it down a bit. So I can do that by choosing the arrow to click the top surface. And then either the pressing S on the keyboard or pressing this button here, the scale button, will then allow me to scale this top surface. I'm going to press the control button as you can read down here the control will scale it about the center so holding the control down on the keyboard I'm going to grab one of the corner pieces and just move it toward the center okay. I can zoom in and continue if I wanted a sharp sharp point I can just do this over and over again until it becomes rather a sharp point but there's, a, there's one way to make a pyramid Grabbing another rectangle, we can do just about the same thing. Again, 20, 20. So then, with the arrow, I can click on the surface, grab the push-pull tool, and lift it up, again, typing 20. Now, perhaps I want an inverted pyramid, and I want, say, for example, the LED to go into the bottom here. Again, with the arrow, highlight that bottom face, S to scale it, Control to scale about the center, and I want to close it in a little bit, not much. Maybe my scale is about 0.5 or so. You can maybe make it a little bit smaller than that. But I need room for the LED to fit inside there. This is a bit more advanced here choose a rectangle again 20 by 20 and the reason I'm doing 20 by 20 is it guarantees that while you guys are at lunch I can print these without much problem they'll be short prints use the push pull tool to push up 10 I want to do half the size here as I want the bottom part to be square and the top part to be kind of a, a pyramid like a house shape so if you draw one you make one rectangle here that's 10 millimeters tall. If you now hold down the control key on your keyboard, you'll see there's, a, or just press the controls key, you'll see there's a plus symbol now on my push pull tool. Now, whenever I push it, it will give me another face, and I can push it up any height I want, or just again type 10. So now my total height is 20, and I have two distinct faces here. Now what I can do is with my arrow key, select the top face, press S to scale, control will allow me to do it through the center, and now this top part is what's drawn in and the bottom square remains the way it is. I can show you how to do one more here with the square. I've never printed these before and it may not work very well, but it's something I just thought of just a minute ago. So again, a 20 by 20 base, push pull it 20 centimeters up, select the top, scale it, press control to scale from the center, like so. And then what I can do is I can now push pull each one of these surfaces. For example, if I select this face, use the push pull tool, I can pull out I don't know, maybe four millimeters or so, just type four. And now if I want each face to be four millimeters, I can simply now just double click, rotate around, choose the push pull, and double click. Each one will remember, or each time it remembers that that last pull was 0.4, and now I've got this, I don't know what you call it, cute little space age looking LED dome ready to be ready to have a hole put into it. All right, well you can do more than just squares. You can make you can make all kind of polygon shapes. So here I'm going to use the polygon tool. Okay. And it starts off with a six-sided polygon. All right, and again, let's make the radius now be 10. So the 
the new text box here says radius, and I know it's not really a radius, but that, that length right here will be 10. Okay. It's a six-sided figure, which we'll stay with for now. I'm going to click on this, lift it up, 20. And now I have a hexagon. I can do the same thing again. Make the radius be 10. But now if I want, if I don't want six sides, let's say I want three sides, I just type 3S for three sides and hit enter. Now I get a triangle. Push pull, type 20, and now we have a little triangular pyramid. Grab the polygon again. Make my radius 10 by typing 10. I can then do 8S, for example, if I want an octagon. The push-pull, 20, gives me that, <clears throat> and so on. The final thing I want to show you is a circle. So if I click on circle, draw my circle, again, radius of 10. If I zoom in on it, you'll actually see that the circle is just a polygon that has 26 sides. So it would be fine if you just printed it just like this. But if you want a nice round circle, then um, I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Let's just keep it like this for now. So push pull, 20. And you can really see those edges here. If you go to view hidden geometry, and you can see that each of these little dotted lines there is, is sort of an edge of that circle. I know it's, it's weird to talk about circles having edges, but that's how SketchUp deals with, um, deals with these geometries. They're just polygons that, that have 26 sides. So let's do it one more time. Circle, radius 10. And now you can see they still have that distinct edges there. I can type 100S to give me 100 sides and now the circle is going to be really smooth. I can push pull that up 20 and again with the hidden geometry you can see that now I still have polygons but they're just so much closer together. Okay so those are my shapes and you don't have to do all of these certainly. In fact, you only have time really probably to do one, but pick one that you like, and then I'm going to show you how to put how to put holes into them. The hole is necessary, of course, so the LED can fit inside. The actual size of the LED, the actual diameter of the LED is five millimeters in diameter and just just under nine millimeters tall. The problem is if you make a hole that's exactly five millimeters here in SketchUp, the 3D printer nozzle has some thickness to it. And so when it draws out the hole, the hole will actually fill in a little bit. So instead of making a 5 millimeter diameter hole, we want a hole that's actually 5.4 millimeters on the computer so that when it prints, it's going to print more like a 5 millimeter hole. And there's some variability in the printer you use, but for our MakerBot Replicator 2, 0.4 millimeters is typically what we do with our holes. We make the diameter of that be about 0.4 millimeters bigger. So that means that the radius of our little circles, which will be used to, to cut holes for the LED, needs to be 2.7 millimeters. So the radius of our LED is 2.7 millimeters. You can certainly put a hole in any side here, but it's important when you use a 3D printer it's important that there's a flat side that's going to be on the platform. This just gives it a nice firm base on which to build the plastic. So I'm just looking underneath all of these. This is the bottom. And I'm just going to add circles to the center of each of these. The circle, again, is going to have a radius of 2.7 millimeters. I'm then going to push that circle in about 9 millimeters so the LED has a, has a nice cavity into which to be placed. So first, let's grab our circle tool. You can put the circle anywhere you want, but it makes sense, I think, to put it in the center. And as long as it's on the face, you see where it says on face there, then 
it will it should print fine but again in the center is going to give us a nice symmetrical lighting so to find the center it's pretty simple you just hover over an endpoint or a corner or an edge hover and then it knows that aha it's I'm, I'm focused now on that corner and then once you hover back into the center you'll find it so now click to start drawing the circle stretch it out and then type in 2.7 to change the radius and I would just do that for any or all of the of the pieces that you've drawn again you've probably only drawn one so forgive me while I go and do this quickly oops so 2.7 of course if the 2.7 circle is bigger than your piece itself then you need to scrap that piece and start over again your piece has to be bigger than the LED obviously so now hover center 2.7 hover sometimes you have to hold your lips just right maybe I didn't hover long enough there you go 2.7 okay for the squares to find those centers and grab the circle. If I hover over a midpoint here and hover over the midpoint here, then it should be, it sh whenever I join up, it will be in the center. Midpoint, hover, midpoint, hover. I'm not holding my mouse down. 2.7. Midpoint, midpoint. Sometimes you have to do it once or twice. And the last one. And now we need to use the push pull tool to make sure that you've highlighted just the circle. I'm going to click, hold it down, push it in a little bit, and you'll see down here my distance is a negative number, negative 1.8 for me. I'm just going to type in 9 now. It knows I want to go in, and now 9 will give me a nice little cavity there. So you can rotate around to see what's happening. These little dashed lines are because I have the hidden geometry turned on. I'm going to turn that off now. And there's a cool little tool here. If you go to View, Face Style, and then choose x-ray you can sort of see what the insides look like and so there's my cavity there nine millimeters and the rest are ready to go it's going to happen fast now you can leave x-ray on if you'd like i'm going to turn it off face style x-ray and now with the push pull tool i'm just going to now double click on any holes i have it's going to remember that my last one was 9. I have my own little x-ray button over here. So now you can see that I am ready to print each of these devices. And it should be just perfect for an LED. I should mention that the LEDs we're using are what's called T1 and 3 quarters or a 5 millimeter LED. All that's left to do now is you have to export these as STLs, and if you don't have SketchUp Pro, I don't think you can do it. So you'll have to send me your file, I'll export them, and then we'll throw it onto the MakerBot printer and print them. Thanks for watching.